All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, moving, thankfully, away from PowerPoint, um, back to the lecture notes. Um, we're moving into Chapter 13. Uh, primary topic of Chapter 13 is chemical kinetics. Um, this is where we want to start to evaluate how time relates to the way a reaction progresses. Um, from reactants to products. So the first thing we want to think about is a quantity called the rate of a reaction. Now one way to define the rate of the reaction is as the change in concentration of a reactant. So delta for change and then square brackets for concentration relative to a change in time. So how much does that concentration go down over a certain period of time. And so we can abbreviate this, just use R as a common way to abbreviate reactant, although I have seen some sources, uh, textbooks or online sources that use A for the reactant. So if you run into that, just a placeholder for what's happening there. Uh, delta R over delta T. Now, unit wise, we measure concentration in terms of molarity. So the units here for a rate is molarity on top, covering delta of the concentration. Now the change in time on the bottom, we'll see lots of different time units depending on the type of reaction we're looking at. Could go anywhere from seconds to years, um, even smaller than seconds, milliseconds or something like that. But probably the most common is seconds, but we'll have concentration units on top, time units on the bottom of this relationship. Now, if we look specifically at a reaction, I've got an example reaction here where we have one mole of N2O5. It's decomposing to make two moles of NO2. And based on one mole of the reactant, we'd only get half a mole of O2. Now, for this reaction, there should only be one numerical value for rate. So we should get the same value for rate no matter which one of the components of the reaction we look at, whether it's a reactant or whether it's a product. So, to make sure that that number comes out the same, there are things we're going to have to do to evaluate whether we're looking at a reactant or a product and what the stoichiometric ratio in the reaction is. So rate of a reaction should always be a positive number. So if you ever go through a calculation and come up with a negative number, just cancel out that negative. The most likely thing is you carried a negative that you shouldn't have. There should have been another negative to cancel out. So just starting with the reactant, this is fairly straightforward. The rate would be the concentration change for N2O5, that reactant, divided by the change in time. Okay? And that would give us a positive number because as a reactant, you start with a high concentration, it gets lower. So you take the initial concentration, subtract the concentration at a certain time, and you get a positive number. Okay? Now, if we use a product, though, say maybe NO2 is easy to... Um, monitor in terms of an experimental setup. So instead of looking at the N2O5 disappear, we're looking at the N2O, sorry, NO2 grow in as the reaction proceeds. If we're trying to evaluate this rate as a function of the change in concentration of NO2, now that would be a negative number because the product is not there when the reaction starts. So your initial concentration is zero. Concentration becomes a positive number. You take zero, you subtract a positive number, you get a negative number. So you'd get a negative change in concentration. We want the rate to be positive, though, so we would add a negative to and I cancel out that first negative. Still be with respect to whatever that time interval is. Now, the other change we have to account for here, every one mole of N2O5 that decomposes, we're getting two moles of NO2. So the way the concentration is changing is different and we have to factor that in. We need to divide by two here or multiply by one half so that the numerical value we get for rate is the same, whether we're defining it on N2O5 or defining it on NO2. Now, similarly, we could define the rate in terms of the other product, the oxygen. So if we take the change in concentration of O2 relative to the change in time. Now, again, that's gonna be negative if we take initial minus final so we'll put in a negative sign to make sure it's a positive number. The concentration of O2 is also changing at a different rate than the concentration of N2O5 is decreasing. So because of the half here in the um, stoichiometric coefficient for the reaction. So in this case, we'd have to counteract that half by multiplying 
by two, but that way we would get the same value for all of those ways of calculating the rate of this particular reaction. Now, rate is not constant with respect to time, and it doesn't change in a linear fashion. So this relationship is not a straight line. Um, on one axis here, I have the concentration of N2O5, the reactant. On the other axis, I have the amount of time that has passed. The way the rate is going to change with time is actually going to look kind of like this. Early on, we've got a pretty high concentration of our reactant. The rate um, is going to be fairly high. Over a certain interval here, we see a fairly large change in the concentration of that reactant. And we see a fairly small change in time. So a lot of concentration change over a small amount of time. Pretty high rate early in a reaction. Late in the reaction, we kind of get the opposite. There's a fairly large time interval here. This is the interval I'm looking at. And there's a pretty small amount of change in the concentration of the reactant. So the rate is getting slower here as time goes on. The rate is going down as time progresses. Now, if anybody's had calculus, if you keep shrinking the size of this interval, that's where you get into things like taking a derivative. That has no bearing on what we're going to talk about in this particular class. It will come up occasionally, but if you have not seen that, something to look forward to in the future.